Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to this incredibly sad time in the history of Tomcat Gas Training. But before we get into this video, please could you take some time to subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. I think by now you know it's Mondays and Wednesdays. So let's get on with it and find out exactly why today is an incredibly sad day in the history of Tomcat gas training. So why is today an incredibly sad day? Well today is a retirement day. No, not me, cheeky beggars. I'm not that old. One of the company vehicles, it is time for retirement. Both these vehicles have been with me for a long time and one of them is getting incredibly old now and has got over 80,000 miles on the clock. So it's time for retirement and time we got a new van. So, it's not you, my little beauty. Been with me from day one. I'm sorry to tell you, it's you, you old blue beast. It's time you went. So this thing is costing me an absolute fortune in repairs and it's gone over 80,000 miles now and we need a good reliable vehicle for the traveling we do when we go on holiday as you've seen from some of my videos. So today's video, even though it's a sad day to see the end of my Ranger, it's also a good day because we're going to pick up my new van. Not a brand brand new van, but a new van to me. Now I did think about getting an electric vehicle and when I looked around, I couldn't find one which suited our purpose. They're just not quite there at the moment. So going for a diesel. So come along with me on this video and let's find out exactly what van I've bought and where I've bought it from. So let's get on with it. On my way now to pick up the van and I'm actually going to Staley Bridge to pick up the van from Manchester Van Sales so that's the company where I've been to buy this van and uh, it's been a long time coming because <laughs> I actually ordered this van over a month ago but because of the modifications I've had done to it I've had to wait quite a while for it to be done. So I haven't seen the van for a month. And I haven't seen the van, oh, well, last time I saw the van, it was uh, just its standard um, limited version of this Ford um, Custom. So it's gonna be quite exciting for me to see the final version now there are a few little things missing from what I've ordered, I'm, we're still waiting for those to be done but I'll get to that when we get there. So yeah, quite excited to uh, get to this Manchester van sales and actually pick up the new van. So this is the first time I've seen the finished article so far, looks pretty good. So if we look at the side, the logo on the side, look at those rims. Absolutely amazing, it looks superb, absolutely just what I wanted. Darren's just going to get me the keys, so if you want to come to uh, Manchester Vans, yeah. Darren's the guy you need to see, I and mean, he's just there. Just that guy in the light blue t-shirt, amazing guy, sorted everything out for me, including getting the guys to come and do the sign writing. So, also, fancy locks put on as well but we'll go through all the extras and we get it home because I'm excited to drive it let's get out with it
So, finally got it home. So let me just take you now on a guided tour of the van. Let's show you what changes I've made and let's see what standard, what comes with this Ford Transit Custom Limited. So, a starter back. So, first thing about the back of this van is I went for the barn doors instead of the tailgate because I didn't really fancy the tailgate even though the tailgate can act as a cover when you're working out the back of your van so I went for the barn doors on the barn doors we've got these yellow levers if I pull the door back it undoes I can now clip that into position it's held in with a clip here and I can swing the doors Hundred and eighty degrees, so I could actually get a standard European pallet in the middle of the wheel arches and into the back of this van. Even though this is the uh, double cap version, also in the back of here, it's been fitted with the safety kit. So basically, all the walls have been plied. The floor has got this rubber matting in there and the wheel arches have been protected as well and we've got the Ford bulkhead which is behind you so even the doors have been plied so we're not going to mark any of the side of the van when we're loading our stuff up in here to uh, go on holiday I have ordered a carpet for the back of here but it's not come yet like I've ordered carpets for inside as well but they've not come yet neither now also in this van you can see we've got tie down hooks so we've got two at the back there we've got one there and we've got one there one there and one there so plenty of hooks to tie stuff down we've also got two lights one there and one there to illuminate the back when uh, it's dark outside so uh, let's continue around this van now while I'm closing this door one of the things I do want to show you is I've had a security lock fitted so there's been a lot of van thefts over the last couple of years um, of people peeling doors back on the vans and you can't trust Ford locks. So I've had a new lock fitted on the back door here. And when we go around to the front again, I'll show you the Ford lock I've replaced on the front. So if you are getting a Ford Transit, a Ford Transit Custom or a Ford Transit Connect, make sure you get rid of the Ford locks because they are absolutely useless. Now when I informed the insurance company that I changed the locks, you know what they said they didn't care it didn't make any difference to my insurance whatsoever whether I put fancy new locks on or whether I didn't but for peace of mind if you're carrying your tools in the back which technically I won't do on a regular basis but there you go um, make sure you get rid of the rubbish Ford locks so while we're still at the back you can actually see I've had the MSRT full body kit put on it or it's an MSRT look like so it's got a splitter at the back and you can see here we've got uh, false exhaust ports so if this was a real one it'd have exhaust here but it isn't it's a fake, fake one so we've got the spoiler on the back I've also got the roof bars on the top as well also at the back of this van I've had a reversing camera fitted can you see me so this van didn't come standard with the reversing camera I had to have it fitted but it did come with reversing sensors at the front and back so uh, when well, you've got one of these vans and you can't see behind you a reversing camera is a must 
So as we come round the side, you can see the roof bars now on the top, and you can see the fancy alloy wheels I've had installed. I've only had it a week. I've already damaged an alloy. Who invents a van, puts alloy wheels on it, and makes the alloy wheels stick out more than the tyre? Anyway, you can also see the side skirts down the side there, which looks pretty cool. So, let's see what we've got in the back. So, the back of the van. First thing is, two sliding doors. And these openings are the biggest openings in the class of van. Out of all vans, I believe. Not that we need it though, because we just need to get in and out. We're not getting cargo in here. Also, in the sliding doors, you would have noticed, there's windows. Not windy windows or electric windows. They're like flicky out windows. So not the best windows in the world, but they still got windows. Now then, look at these beauties. So, this is what I've paid a lot of money for inside this van at the back. So as you can see, we've got these fancy seats by RS. So, Manchester Van Sales had these seats taken away, uh, reupholstered in this leather of my choice with the stitching colour of my choice and obviously being a Man U fan you gotta go for red haven't you so uh, that's the seats so let's see how comfy it is and how easy it is to get in this van now we've got a nice grab handle here so we can swing ourselves in and get ourselves comfy now I am six foot two 1.88 meters to be precise and I've still got headroom and uh, quite a lot of leg room as well so this is a bench seat though which does not move or recline or anything now the driver's seat is set in my position so if I scoot over you can still see there is plenty of leg room behind the driver's seat if I move to the middle it's completely flat floor like you would find in the back of a van so there's no um, drive shaft tunnel going to the back wheels or anything like that so we've got a complete flat floor and uh, very very comfortable for three adults to sit in the back of here now if I shut the door So, you can now see clearly the window. <laughs> so if you press these two tabs here, flick that out, push the window, and you can see it opens. Not by a lot, but it opens. So that's the window. And in the door pocket here, we've got a nice big storage bin for your cup holders and a bit of rubbish. Now, features we've got inside. We have a light inside, so we've got a reading light which we could turn on here and we've also got lights here for when you come into the the back now we like I say we do have grab handles here and when we look at the front you'll see there isn't any grab handles to get in so that's one of my gripes when my mother-in-law tried to get in the front of the van yesterday she wasn't impressed because there was no handle so she ended up coming in the back <laughs> and the other thing which is shocking is um, there's no charging ports in the back of this van anyway. None whatsoever. Which is a bit disappointing when you're spending all this money on a fancy van. So maybe that's something else I'm going to have to have fitted in here. Um, charging ports. So when we go away, kids ain't going to be happy. One of the things I am playing with is having a TV put in, but is that being a bit of a idiot put it in the comments down below if you think i should have a tie or not not that i'll be able to watch it because i'll be driving but anyway for the kids when we go away so that's the back of this van plenty of room for three adults seats a bit bolt upright and uh but really comfy also underneath the seat there's loads of storage space for when we go away there's also a bar here
which unhooks so you can put your stuff in and then it's got two different settings where you can set it so uh, that's a pretty handy storage space I have been looking for some storage boxes what will fit under the seats and I think I've found some for ready for when we go away so that's the back of this van let's continue around now you can actually see this van is the short wheel based van it's about 300 mil shorter I think than the long wheel base and the way you tell the difference is here so on the long wheel base van this continues down here and the door ends up about here so that's how you tell the difference on the outside from the long wheel and the short wheel base so as we come round to the front you can see we've got colour coded mirrors the mirrors are also heated but I'll show you all that when we get in and as we come to the front you can see one of the new things I do like about this new shaped transit uh, custom is the LED running lights on the front looks quite smart and they stay on for a little while after you've turned the engine off to illuminate where you're going also on the front you can see I've had another fancy splitter put on the front and we've got the Ford fancy grill rather than the Ford badge which you'll find on the MSRT and obviously our logo on the bonnet under the bonnet we have Ford's 2 litre TDCI Eco Blue engine which gives out 129 brake horsepower and 385 newton meters of torque at 1500 revs per minute so this is a diesel engine it's also a six-speed automatic engine or is it a six-speed automatic van anyway the transmission connected to this is automatic so let's find out exactly why I chose this engine rather than the hybrid one so the first reason why I didn't go for the hybrid transit custom was this engine well this is actually the one litre petrol engine which doesn't drive the wheels it recharges the battery but it only gives you a distance of 32 miles when you're fully electric so this is the dashboard it looks completely different than the one what I've got but it does show you when you do brake you actually can start recharging the battery depending on which mode you're in I just didn't think the mileage it could travel on full electric was um, quite there yet and the engine is very very much underpowered so this is how you charge this hybrid engine so there is a flap which is in the passenger side bumper and because I live in a terraced house there is no way I could have one of these boxes outside and be able to plug in this van so now you know why I have chosen the diesel rather than the uh, hybrid engine so what is an eco blue engine then well let's just go around here and finish off on the outside and have a look at the fuel tank and that'll explain why now there's another thing I'm not quite happy with with this van is actually the petrol flap because you've got to open the passenger door to be able to open the flap I suppose it is safety it stops people robbing your fuel anyway so why is this Ford engine called an eco blue it's called an eco blue because we have to add blue so this stuff you put into your tank to uh, make this diesel engine more efficient and we put it in to this little blue cap down here the one at the top is where your diesel goes in now this add blue tank holds about 21 litres and will last about 6,000 miles before you have to top it up again now there is a warning on the dashboard which tells you when we need to add this stuff in I haven't seen it yet so I don't know how, long, how much I've got left so that's why I'm carrying this big tub of it anyway that's why this engine's an eco blue one and that's why Ford say it passes the Euro 6 engine standards whatever that means so that's adding the fuel and add blue to this transit custom
So, that's the outside. I think we've had enough of that now. Let's hide this alloy damaged alloy and let's get inside the front and let's have a look in the cab. So, coming round to the driver's door to finally get inside this cab. First of all, you notice this is the new lock I've had fitted. So I've got rid of that old rubbish Ford one. I open the door. There's the old rubbish Ford one. So I've had that taken out and I've had security locks put in because I believe they can get in with anything with that. And it will open all your central locking. So change them, cause the rubbish. Now, before we jump into the van and the cab, we might as well have a look at the door while we're here. So as you can see, there's three really good door pockets. So we've got one here where we can put bottles and stuff and then pens in the top of here or any rubbish you like. So for a plumber, an electrician, gas engineer, whatever, there's plenty of spaces there to put your bits and bobs in. So we've also got here, we've got um, a door switch, what locks everything. So we can lock and unlock the doors manually here. We've also got the handle all nicely finished in chrome so a little bit better than your standard van you get a little bit of a chrome finish the handle there now has got this plastic effect <laughs> looking a bit smart there and on the top here we've got our electric windows and we've also got electric mirrors so let's see how they work so with the adjusting knob for adjusting your um, door mirrors if I pull it backwards it brings it inwards and if I pull it backwards again it does it back out again but it will only do it if you've got it set in the middle so if you've got it for your mirrors it won't pull back but if you get it in the center pull it back it will make your mirrors go in or out now on the floor of this transit custom limited it comes standard with carpet unlike the cheaper versions but I've had these purpose-made mats done for the floor and you can see they're in the front and the rear just to uh, give us a bit more um, protection you see with the name on the mats now finally we can actually get in this van and have a look inside this cab So now we're actually sat in the cab, we can see this is a really, really nice place to be. So I've had this steering wheel made, uh, customised, it's the same kind of style as the MSRT, again made by RS who've made the seats. You can also see the steering wheel adjusts up and down and for reach as well. Well, the Ranger never did that. And you can see we've still inside the cab got these lovely red and black RS seats. Again, these were sent away to um, RS to be recovered. Now, as I said before, we've got automatic gearbox. And uh, I'll explain about the automatic gearbox when we take it for a test drive instrument panels well laid out on the steering wheel we've got cruise control we can adjust the radio we can talk on the telephone via it we can mute everything so all the controls are on the steering wheel again all the little vents they've all finished in chrome so it gives it that little bit of a classy van feel We've also got this 8 inch touch screen entertainment system. So again, this has got DAB radio, you can get Wi-Fi, it's got um, Apple CarPlay and what's the Android version called? Anyway, I've only got Apple, but well, it does that as well. All you do is plug it in here and uh, stick it on your stand and it comes through there. And it gives you satellite navigation and all your apps from your phone 
really nice really nice system up here we've got a 12 volt charger uh, port and we've also got the USB stuff for our Apple CarPlay loads of cubby holes in the dashboard itself even somewhere to put your your masks when you go into the shop so we've even got a little pack for that the van also comes with a reasonably good glove box more storage space up here we've got reading lights here and here and also if we pull this down we've got reading lights here as well which is a good touch we've even got it on the passenger side we've got no grab handle on this side we have on this side but here we don't we've got a glassy storage case again down at the bottom here we've got 12 volt again we've got USB and we've got air conditioning we've got heated windscreen we've got heated mirrors all the fancy stuff you can think of in a top of the range van but I do miss a CD player or is that just because I'm old but it's nothing better than sliding your Tears of Fear CDs in I have to play it through my phone now one of the things I'm not happy with it though is it uses your data from your phone when you're doing your sat nav but again it is up to date on your sat nav sat nav your sat nav <laughs> so that's inside this cab fantastic place we've got loads of cup holders they're everywhere cup holder here cup holder here cup holder here cup holder there and normally you would have a cup holder here but when they covered the seats they covered the two cup holders and the little pen thing what goes there that's a bit of a shame not that I'll ever use it but there you go and you can see there's three seats at the front three at the back so it's a six seater we've also got automatic lights We've got fog lights front and rear, and we've also got automatic windscreen wipers. This van also came with stop start and this parking assist. The last thing I want to show you in this cab is the secret compartment. So, if you pull the seat up here, pull it forward, we have a secret compartment to store your valuables you could put a laptop in here you could put your fancy flue gas analyzer if you're a gas engineer knowing that it's safe and secure well it was until i just told everybody where it is now if this was the van version there would be a little flap inside the back of the van to allow you to get three meters tube in here as well if you're a plumber or how long do electricians have conduit? Anyway, another thing for this as well is the storage place if you have the hybrid. So you can put your electric charging cables and bag in here. So uh, that's the secret compartment in here. Also, these seats, like the driver's seat, they're heated as well keep your body nice and toasty so let's finally take this van for a test drive so I can show you exactly how good this van is let's get going or should I say let's get on with it so the noise you can hear now it's telling me my handbrake's on Now, as we come through the gates, you're going to hear bleeping if I go around the cars. And that's the sensors on the front bumper telling me I'm too close to the edge. So it's called driving assist, which we've just seen. And you might just be able to hear the squeaky door in the back. It's absolutely annoying me. <laughs> 
I've had a look at it, but I think I need to take the door panel off to find out why it uh, is making that horrible creaky groaning. So, around the estate now, drives just like a car. It drives so much better than the Ranger because it's not as wally, 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 it doesn't wobble about as much. <laughs> Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it up onto the motorway and give it a blast um, and let's see what it's like. Now, this gearbox, it's not as good as the Rangers. I don't like the manual setting on it. On the Ranger, you used to have to flick it to the side and then you could just move it up and down and it would change gear. This one, this, it's the last setting on the gearbox and you have to use this horrible button on the side to make it go up or down not a good idea i don't like it at all um, i've not got used to it yet because i still think i'm driving the ranger and my wife's car is an automatic as well and um which is pretty much the same way as the ranger was this, for some reason, has got this manual setting right at the bottom end, near the drive. And you're forever going into that and wondering why it's not changing gear. Other than the gearbox, or should I say the gear shift being like that, or the creaky door at the back, I can't really fault the drive on this. This RS steering wheel I've got, I love it. <laughs> it's a right big, thick, chunky steering wheel which obviously I had bespoke for the van made by the same company you do the seats and they've done a cracking job of it and I'm so glad I didn't pick the carbon fibre one because I could have gone for carbon fibre this leather one is just so nice to hold because it's so thick and chunky the other thing, this armrest just about getting used to it now because the Ranger one was a lot lower and a lot bigger and I guess if you add the manual version of this car it would get in the way when you're changing gear but because I've got the automatic all right it's cool windscreen vision pretty good where the rear view mirror should be and obviously there isn't a rear view mirror on this one because we can't see out the back <laughs> Just about coming up to the motorway now, so we'll give ourselves some foot down business. This camera's wobbling all over the place. And um, we'll give it some beans and see what happens. I do like the noisy uh, indicators as well. On the Ranger, you couldn't hear them, they were too quiet. On this one, you can actually hear you going, you've, you've got your indicator on. So let's uh, put his foot down. I've got my foot right to the floor and we're already doing 60. And we're doing 70 now. Did you hear the uh, automatic locks come on on the doors? Because whoever had it before me decided to set the locks at 70. I need to change that. I need to go into the program and change that. So quiet. It's quieter than the Ranger. Smoother ride than the Ranger. Whether it's going to end up more economical than the Ranger is another matter. At the moment, I'm doing about 25 miles to the gallon. The Ranger was doing 19. So I'm just coming up to a truck now. I'm just going to see how quick it gets past it. Oh, he pulled out in front of me as well, but there you go. Oh my word, it picks up so quick, this for a van. Oh my word. Bear in mind, it's only a two litre engine. Proper flies. And it's quiet as well. Wind noise, you can hear a little bit of wind noise and a little bit of motorway rumble. But when you expect that in a van, so, as far as I'm concerned with the drive, 
this is 10 times better than the Ranger and uh, it's incredibly easy to drive well wife's not driven it yet so <laughs> then we'll find out how easy it is to drive <laughs> So that's taking this Transit Custom Limited 2 litre TDCI Eco Blue um, 130 van <laughs> automatic for a test drive. The Ford Transit Custom was the first one to score the 5 stars on the Euro NCAP crash test in 2012, achieving an overall score of 77%. And that is the end of this video on my new Ford Transit Custom. Now, the names of the companies I've put in this video, they've not sponsored this video in any way. All they have done is provided me with a fantastic service. Now, all these companies are local to me, and like I say, I've not paid me a penny to put them in there, so they've not sponsored them. But if you are in the Ashton area or the Tameside area where I live, check out the companies if you require a van or you want some new locks. Now the lock company's from Huddersfield, but they still came over to sort the locks out. But uh, yeah, offered me a fantastic service. So if you've liked this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. I think by now you know, it's Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.